So in this episode, we're going to talk about some different data types we have inside PHP. And we did actually talk about some examples already, for example, strings and integers. But before we continue our lessons, I really quickly want to cover just a couple more of the basic ones before we do anything else in PHP. So the first one we're going to talk about is, of course, the string. And we did actually talk about the string in previous episodes, but there's just a couple of things I want to mention regarding strings. So let's actually try and create an example here. We'll create a variable called name equal to a string. And of course, the way we write a string is by writing double quotes, two of them, and then we write some text inside of them. So we can actually say coding is fun. And this would actually become a string. So anytime we put characters inside double quotes, it does actually become a string. So this is one way of writing a string, but there's actually another way we can write it. So if I actually go ahead and delete the double quotes and write single quotes instead, this also becomes a string. And there's actually no difference between using single or double quotes. The difference though, is that let's say we're writing a long piece of code and we did already use double quotes once in this line of code we're writing. Now, if I want to include a string inside this piece of code I'm writing, which already has double quotes around it, then I'm going to be canceling out the double quote beginning tag since I have, you know, four double quotes inside one line of code. So they're going to cancel each other out. Now, this is one example where we might want to consider using single quotes inside our string instead, since it's not going to interfere with the double quotes we already used. So this is just some basic stuff regarding strings. Let's go on to the other one called an integer. So an integer is basically when we're talking about numbers. So let's actually go ahead and copy our variable up here. And instead of having a string in here, we're just going to go ahead and write, for example, 20, which is going to be an integer. Now, if I were to include some decimal points behind it, it suddenly becomes something we call a float. Now, a float is also a number, but it does actually have decimal points behind it. So we can actually say five, seven, eight, four, for example. And it actually becomes what we call a float. Now, why would you want to know that these are different names? Well, when we do actually get to the point where we need to create databases, we do actually need to tell the database what kind of data it should expect to get when we do type something into the database. And if you write that you want, for example, a float or an integer, you should put integers and float into the database. So you do need to know the difference between using floats and integers. So you can't just call all numbers for integers. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is something called a Boolean. And a Boolean is basically a true and false statement. And the reason we want to use these is because a lot of times in PHP, you will actually be using something called conditional testing. So let's say the user does something specific and you want to check if the user has already done it. So if the user clicks on this button, you could, for example, check if they already clicked another button beforehand. And this is going to return either a true or false statement. So when we talk about true and false statements, we do actually get a value. For example, if we do get a true statement back, then we're going to get a value as one. If we do get a false statement, then we're going to get a value called zero. So if you do actually check for something, for example, if you go in and check if a database has, you know, a certain type of data and it returns back zero, it means that there's no data available inside the database. Now, if it returns as one, it means that there is in fact something in there. So this is something, or at least an example of using a Boolean. Now, the last data type we're going to talk about is something called an array. And I do know that there's more data types than these, but I don't want to cover them yet since it might get a little bit difficult, <laughs> at least this early on. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about arrays as the last type. So an array is basically when we have data, for example, you, you know how we can create a variable that is equal to, for example, a string or a number or something else. Let's say we have a lot of variables that are connected to one specific thing. Well, in a lot of times then, it's gonna be easier to connect them all to one object, one, one array. So what we can do here is we can actually create a variable called names with an S behind it because we have more than one now and set it equal to an array. And the way we write an array is by writing array parentheses and inside this array, or at least inside the parentheses, we can start putting data in here. So for example, I'm just going to go ahead and include a couple here, like so. We can actually put in some double quotes and make sure you separate them with commas. And then inside the first double quote, we could, for example, write Daniel. 
the second double quote we can write Dennis and the last one we can write Michael like so now if you want to spit something out from this array we can actually on the next line echo and then we need to refer to the variable called names and ask for which kind of data inside the array we want to spit out and the way we do that is by writing brackets single quotes and inside here we're going to go ahead and say either 0 1 2 3 4 and so on and so on and so on depending on which data we want to spit out in this case daniel will be 0 because we always start at 0 when we count positions so it's going to be 0 1 2 so if i spit out 0 and actually go ahead and refresh my browser. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this up here because this will probably give me an error if we do take it in the browser. So if I refresh, you guys can see we spit out Daniel. If I go ahead and write one, you can see we spit out Dennis and so on and so on and so on. So this is how an array works and you will actually be using arrays quite often. I do actually remember in the beginning when I learned about PHP and I heard about arrays, I was thinking to myself, well, couldn't really see that many examples where we would actually be using arrays, but you will actually be using it quite often. Even if you don't really see how you could use it quite often right now, at some point when we get further in these lessons, you will be using them quite often. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is all I wanted to mention about different data types. I just want to throw a couple out there, at least some of the basic ones that you need to know about. And you don't really need to memorize these. You just need to know that there is in fact different types of data out there. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.